Hi, I'm Ellen Jakowski. I lead HP's Sustainability Strategy and Innovation Programs, and I'm here today to introduce Benjamin Von Wong. Um, ben is an activist, an artist, a photographer, uh, best known for his environmental art installations, and you can see some of his artwork here today in the lobby. Uh, he's also an amazing collaborator. I recently spent five days with Ben out in the middle of the ocean studying ocean plastic and getting inspired by his work and his sense of purpose in what he's doing. Uh, he was named one of the 11 content branded masterminds by Adweek and his work has generated over 100 million views on topics like fast fashion, electronic waste, and ocean plastic. So I hope you're as inspired by his art as I am and as HP is. Ben. Hello, everyone. I am particularly excited to be here today because I feel like I'm in a room full of people who are actually solving the world's problems. Um, the reason that I do what I do is to help empower people like you guys to continue doing the work that you do. I see myself as sort of the, the maybe the piece a little bit in between that helps to make topics that are maybe harder, more complicated, more difficult, a little bit more palatable. So to give you a little bit of context, this is kind of what I create. Um, I make art installations. This one's made out of 168,000 straws that we put on display in Ho Chi Minh City for two months. And it was on display there for anyone to kind of pass by um, and, and get intrigued by. Right? And so I try to use the emotions of shock and awe to trigger um, curiosity. Because once people are curious, then you can start having a conversation. Um, I can break things down a little bit, talk about how it was built. You know, we had these ribs made out of, of, of recycled wood. Um, we layered everything with LED wires. But maybe more importantly is the fact that these installations were built with the help of hundreds of volunteers that would stream in from all over the world uh, to participate into, in these projects. Um, and more importantly, that these straws that we collected were collected off the streets of Vietnam over the course of six months um, and had to be manually cleaned uh, one at a time in order to uh, create this art piece. Now, I try to find different ways to strike up these conversations. Um, sometimes pouring, uh, pouring a little bit of uh, uh, using the data that you guys create, for example, that every 60 seconds a truckload of plastic flows into the ocean, and use that as a source of inspiration. In this case, we, pour, we, we put a truckload of plastic that we collected on an island in Greece, uh, collected over the course of a week uh, through the help of the community there, um, put that onto a truck, onto a boat, out into the water and threw that into the ocean in order to bring to life a statistic of how every 60 seconds a truckload of plastic flows into the ocean. What does that look like? What does that feel like? Um, and it's through these processes, I think, that you get to connect with people on a different level because you're not just talking cold numbers and statistics. You're creating something a little bit different that draws a different connection with people. They get to see, they get to feel, they get to actually experience what this might be like. And I think there's something really, really powerful and interesting there. Um, now, when you look at these projects, they look a little larger than life. They look really complex. They look really intense. However, I think we forget that we can do a lot with very little. Um, this project, for example, we created with students out of Georgetown University. Um, I met these kids. They were in the process of trying to tackle the microfiber problem, which is that every, uh, you know, all the, sh all the clothing that we wear, polyester, nylon, spandex, all release little pieces of plastic into the water stream. Um, and that flows into the water every single time we do our laundry, but it's a really hard, invisible problem to tackle. How do you bring an idea like this to life? And so we thought that it could be really interesting to um, use microfibers as a metaphor for like these monsters crawling out of the laundry machine. And we built this out of cardboard and clothing that we collected from Goodwill in order to tell this story. And so it's, it's, it's through these processes that like art can kind of bridge this gap. And I think that's something really interesting. And so what does this whole thing actually look like? Um, what is this process? I have a video here that I thought would just be a lot more easy for you to understand what the entire process of an art project might look like and the resulting video that comes out of it. How do you get people to talk about something that is ordinary, ugly, and boring? I wasn't too sure, but from experience, I know that the internet loves to see things that are extravagant, unique, and different. So applying that same concept to plastic bottles, having 10,000 of them seemed like a great start at making something ordinary into something extravagant. With more plastic than fish in the sea scheduled for 2050, it made sense to add an ocean component to the project. 
A sea of plastic was interesting and sad, but it needed something unique and beautiful to truly stand out. What more unique and beautiful to represent the ocean than a mermaid? And so with the help of a waste management center called Tomra and a local artist called Cynthia, we ended up with 10,000 plastic bottles that came in a 50-foot truck, along with a beautifully designed, handmade mermaid tail. This unexpected combination, I felt, had the potential to be something truly different. So with all three components to make things shareable, the extravagant, the unique, and the different, I felt like we had all of the ingredients necessary to create something that could potentially make the boring topic of plastic pollution more shareable. As a shoot deadline creeped forward, dozens of volunteers joined us in our quest, contributing whatever they could, from helping us clean and delabel thousands of bottles, to rigging up my camera to the ceiling with plywood and pulleys, to borrowing a 52-inch TV from Costco. For the mermaid, talented artists came together to transform our beautiful model into a believable mermaid. And before I knew it, all the pressure was on me, waiting to see if the concepts would work or just be flushed down the drain. As the day flew by, volunteers worked tirelessly, pushing bottles around, collecting them, organizing them by color before tossing them right back out onto the floor to create a new set of patterns that some crazy photographer had told them to do. Slowly but surely, an extravagant, unique, and different series appeared, just like I had hoped. But deep in the back of my mind, one nagging thought remained. How much difference could a series like this possibly make in encouraging people to stop using plastic bottles? Honestly, I'm not sure, but I guess I'm about to find out. Thank you. So this video ended up getting 37 million views on, on Facebook. It, um, it's had quite a little bit of success, in, and, I, and I think it's just because, you know, we hear about these problems all the time, and they're always so dark and so negative, and there's only so long you can pay attention to those facts before it sort of, your brain turns off. You don't want to see something sad and tragic again. You need to see something hopeful. You need to see something inspirational. And so that's kind of what I try to do. Now, I didn't always start in the impact space. Actually, quite the contrary. I, I really just wanted to survive as a creative for the longest time. I quit my day job in 2012. I was in a hard rock mining engineering. And I just wanted to travel the world and be creative. And as a young creative, the dream is to just get paid to do what you do best. Um, however, in order to get paid, you first need to get noticed. And so I was going around trying to create work that was fantastical, anything that would help me stand out. And I was creating work like this, where I'd collaborate with people that I'd find on the internet. We'd go out, make costumes on our own. This was built with tree bark that we found uh, lying around in the forest, and hot glued it to muslin cloth, created the papier mache horns, and I'd just create these fantastical scenes in, hope, in hopes of attracting attention. Um, it didn't really seem to matter what, like, how extravagant my projects got, though. Um, Finding the attention of the right people just seemed a little bit of a struggle, and it took me a little while to understand why, and one of the hypotheses is that if you're not able to describe the work that you do in a very simple way, um, in a way that creates curiosity and intrigue, then nobody actually wants to care. So if I can't explain how, um, I can't say, um, look at this photo of this bird lady on a big rock, um, it just doesn't quite convey the beauty and the majesty of the, of the image itself, so no one wants to pay attention to it. Similar with the three tree people in a tree. Um, and so I kind of discovered that through the process of, of experimenting. And until one day, what I did was I tied a model underwater, 30 meters, in a shipwreck in Bali, and suddenly that one blew up on the internet. And, and, and why? It's like technically the image is just as beautiful as the others. However, the difference between this one is that it was explained very easily in a single sentence. People found it intriguing, and now they needed to learn more. And that became something that I could apply to get more interesting work along the way. So I kind of applied this to different clients that I started getting. This one, we put superheroes on the edge of a 40-story skyscraper. Um, uh, they're, they're customer support heroes. We call themselves support heroes, and we don't want to show to what great heights they would go for their customer service, right? Like a fun spin on the whole thing, how to create a conversation. Once again, it doesn't actually matter if you like the image or not. Um, if there's a conversation around it, if there's a debate around it, that's called engagement, right? It's all good things. And so eventually I got like my first major career break. Um, this, was, uh, this was created for a cell phone company called Huawei. They're, I think, the second largest cell phone company out of China. And um, uh, they, they wanted to hire me to create this 
uh, Epic image with their cell phone, and it landed me uh, quite a little bit of money in the bank, which was amazing, and I got my face plastered on the side of big billboards all over the world, which was, a, which was a dream. That was a dream as a creative, to stand out, to get paid to do what I do best. But it just left me feeling quite a little bit empty. It didn't quite fulfill anything inside of me, because ultimately, what was I doing? I was moving product off a shelf, and that didn't quite sit well with me. And so I started to think back to the different projects that I found most meaningful, the one that resonated deepest within my heart. And um, there's this project that I did uh, a couple years ago where a family came up to me and said, hey, um, we would like to know if you could help us make a video for a little girl who is dying of a terminal degenerative brain disease. It's called San Filippo Syndrome. And around the age of three, four years old, they slowly lose the ability to walk, talk, and speak until they die in their teenage years. And so it's basically a children's version of Alzheimer's. And, um, and there was no cure at the time, nothing, not even a hope not even a clinical trial that they could apply for. And they thought that if they could just raise enough money and awareness quick enough, they might stand a chance. And so I ended up flying myself over, um, stayed on their sofa for a week, made a video, and then over the course of a year, we uh, a month, we raised a million dollars. Over the course of, of the year, we raised $2 million. And that was a project where I felt like my skills had actually moved the needle. It's something that I felt like, oh, wow, what I do can make a difference. Except I didn't really know how to fuse what this was, which was video, with fantasy, which I actually loved doing. And so it took a little bit of time. It took a little bit of experimenting. It took a little bit of playing around, trying to figure out how I fit into the world. And, and, and I learned a lot of lessons along the way. Um, this was one of the first ones that I tried doing, obviously inspired by Mad Max, wanted to talk about uh, coal pollution, climate change. I learned that when you do things negatively, it doesn't work as well, because this is the very people you're trying to preach to tune off right away. They're not intrigued. They're not curious. They feel like you're telling them what to do, and so they turn off. They don't want to know more. Um, I figured out that it's really hard to get nonprofits involved in things that are first-time challenges, because nobody wants to take a risk, even if you've pseudo-done it before. So I, had I knew how to tie a model down underwater. No one wanted to let me tie models underwater with sharks swimming around. Um, but I ended up, went ahead, did it anyways, and, um, and this ended up generating over 80,000 petition signatures to create shark sanctions in Malaysia. Right? So, so I kind of had to work my way through these things until I eventually started figuring out this idea. So I, I don't just do plastics, but plastics is the one that's been the most trendy and incidentally the easiest to capitalize on at the moment. And so you know, this was created with 18,000 plastic cups to create these installations, and now it's sort of moved, uh, moved on. I, how do you leverage the fact that people on the internet have such a short attention span? How do you leverage the fact that we no longer control distribution unless you have a lot of dollars to pour into advertising? What if you leverage the fact that every single person owns a cell phone um, and has a camera today and has a social media account? And what if you could just design something once and let everyone else kind of come in and take a photograph, right? So this is kind of where my life has been shifting into, always looking for new ways to engage people. How do you open the door wider so that more people can come and join in on the conversation so that you guys can do the work that you really want to do? And so I want to end on one really quick analogy, and it's just going to come with this chain, because I know that being in the impact space is really difficult. I've only done it for a couple years, and it's something that I found really challenging. But I think probably one thing in common between all of us here in this room is that we have one life. right? So this represents an approximate life of a person. It took me about 25 years to find out the first quarter of my life to figure out what to do with myself. Um, then it took me a couple more years to figure out how to get paid to do what I wanted to do. And then I spent like a couple more years trying to figure out how I was going to make the world a better place. And in, in these, this little bit of time, I've managed to do these really interesting projects that have, um, have, have really, I think, helped move the conversation forward just a little bit. Maybe not to the level, level of someone like Louis, but, but start that conversation. And so when I get frustrated with the process, which I think happens to all of us, what I like to remember personally, is that there's like all this time left to make a difference. And we all have quite a lot of time left to make a difference. And most importantly, it's not a linear line. It's actually like an exponential line. Because the whole first half of your life, or the whole first segment of your life, you're just trying to figure out how you fit in the world. But then it only gets easier from there. And if we can just get more people to join in uh, onto this, this party, so that we make the most use of the time that we have left, I think uh, the world can be really exciting, and that we can hit all these deadlines that everyone keeps mentioning. All right, thank you.